There is a wider conversation to be had about the mix uh, of politics and music and or slash entertainment, which I guess, you know, mm. harps back to our Barbara Streisand conversation a little bit earlier in that film, um, the way we were. But um, but also Barbara in life as well. That she's very politically inclined and very vocal and always has been mm -hmm. um, and is very clear about who she aligns with um, and has had absolute hell, absolute hell for supporting, uh, well, for being vocal and, well, I mean, she sort of supported the Clinton campaign really heavily and really um, visually. And they just, people just, uh, I don't think people left her alone for like 10 years. Well, people or, get, are even, we talking about people or are we talking about media? Because I think the media gets very cross when um, people from the entertainment world try to immerse themselves or involve themselves in politics, right? I mean, funnily enough, people didn't seem to get that angry about it with Eurovision, I guess because the people that in Eurovision don't really wield that much power, right? They, they're mm. mo mostly kind of like unknowns. Obviously, Oli Alexander is the exception in that uh, space. But um, they, yeah, don't sort of like wield the power that, um, that I'm talking about, you know, I'm, I guess maybe I'm talking about people, Bob Dylan, uh, Joe Strummer, Bob Marley, Nina yeah. Simone, you know, p people from the past that have immersed themselves in whatever uh, political movements um, were going on at the time. Um, myself <laughs> included, actually, you know, I mm. have been quite vocal about my political beliefs in the past. It's not something that I do so much now. And in all honesty, it's probably because I w w want an easier life. Um, but who was um very much about? Um, was... It was, I guess, it, when I wrote it, it was about George Bush because George W. Bush, because it was the tail end of George Bush's tenure as president and going into Obama, so things seemed very fraught politically, and. Right. Um, there was lots of sort of conversations going on about um, female reproductive rights. And, um, you know, there was a lot of stuff around that Westboro church. Do you remember um, that Louis III went and um, interviewed them? Okay. Uh, they would like go and protest outside abortion clinics. And, um, and there was a lot of like homophobic rhetoric uh, in the mainstream at the time. So I wrote that song, but I'm, I'm more talking about my, um, you know, my political stance uh, in the not the last election but the election before that um yeah and this would have been on social media yes and also i got myself involved in some conversations about um refugees i went and did a visit to um calais uh, i think in like sort of 2015 2016 and and people get really really upset about it um and I guess it's... I wonder why that is. Because I feel like it gives... I'm thinking of, like... Yeah, some of the people that you were just talking about, like someone like Nina Simone. It's like oh, her being out in the world and say as a very big, powerful person and saying what you believe in and aligning with that and letting people know about that. I think it just gives, like, depth and breadth to the character of and the person that Nina Simone is as a musician and a person. Like, I don't feel like there was a particular, like, backlash. I mean, I think the reason like that people get, or the media get so angry about it is because the media believe that that is their role within society is to oh. influence people politically. And so when people that are creative... Um, want to share their ideas about polit politics, it really works. <laughs> <laughs> because people <laughs> trust artists, they buy their products. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't get yes. a politician to fill up, you know, a football stadium to go and share your ideas, mm -hmm. but Taylor Swift can do it five nights a week. So can Harry Styles. Wow. So if those people, you know, can get people to part with hundreds, if not thousands of pounds to come and hear them share their ideas, it's, mm. it's, it's real power. And I think that that so terrifies the media because they mm. want to harness mm. that power. They want to control people's thoughts when it comes to where they're going to, um, you know, put their votes. And what do you think Taylor will do? I don't know. I don't, um, I don't know. I mean, I think quite, it's interesting. It'd be quite interesting to, for her to, to, you know, be aware of how much power she holds it oh i think she's aware quite interesting i think she's aware time. but i think yeah. she's also sure. aware of the backlash that she will get from yeah. the people that are you know quote unquote in control 
um, and uh, and whether she wants to risk, you know, what she's achieved because mm. the tide can turn and it can turn very quickly. What happened to you? What, what was your kickback on that whole situation? What was my kickback? Oh. Yeah, like what happened? I had to move countries, continents. <laughs> yeah, I left the country, <laughs> actually. I don't know if you remember, but there was this guy that like drove his van into a mosque in Finsbury Park like a, a few years yeah, ago. And when he got, to, yeah. when they arrested him, he had like a piece of paper in his pocket that said he was, it, it had my name on it, Jeremy Corbyn's name on it, and Sadiq Khan's name on it. So. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, like it has real world consequences when people want to like use you as like a political lightning rod to make an example of there are like people I in the I world know you're on that list yeah Jesus. there are people in that world that take what the daily mail and the sun or whoever else has to write to heart and they believe that you're you're dangerous um mm. so yeah i guess it's scary <laughs> it's scary <laughs> i really didn't know that that is scary yeah well, I guess this is a good time for me to talk about age-appropriate relationship yep. gaps. <laughs> <laughs>